Now there's no standard way uh, for balancing equations. Uh, the best thing is, is that you have them balanced at the beginning and then when you manipulate the equations, whatever you do to the left-hand side of the equation, you have to do to the right-hand side of the equation. But there is a trick to know if you're on the right track, if you've got the equation close. The force on the satellite, the gravitational force from the Earth, is the gravitational constant G, capital G, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth squared. This has units of meters per second squared. It's an acceleration. I want to have on the right-hand side something that gives me meters per second squared. I know that the velocity of the satellite has meters per second. So if I square this, I now have meters squared per second squared. And if I then divide by r, the distance to the center of the Earth, I have now the correct units on the right, meters per second squared. So I've made sure that this equation balanced, and that's actually the two equation. Now I can start manipulating this equation. For instance, I want to uh, multiply both sides of the equation by r and get rid of this r because I can, um, because they divide r into r is 1, and here I get rid of one of these r's, and so I have gm divided by r is equal to v squared. And this is the equation for the velocity of a satellite uh, circling the Earth. If I want to know its orbital period, I can use this same principle. The distance that a satellite goes is the circumference of the circle of the orbit which is 2 pi times uh, r. That's in meters. If I want to know the period in time, I then just divide by the velocity uh, in meters per second, and the answer is in seconds. Another example, you drop a ball from a height h. The acceleration of gravity is again in meters per second, and the height is given in meters. So now, if I take g and divide by h, I get something that has the units of 1 over second squared. So, so, I, so the time that, that, that this ball would drop should be something like 1 over t squared. Now this equation is not quite right, because what this doesn't tell me is that there's a factor of Two missing, but it almost it got it almost got it right. Fourth example. Let's look at the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. Oxygen. I have two oxygen atoms here and only one oxygen atom there. So I have to multiply the right hand side by two in order to get the two oxygen. Now I have four ox hydrogen on the right hand side. I need four hydrogen on the left hand side. So again, I multiply by 2, and I've now balanced this chemical reaction. So uh, use these tricks to help you make sure that you've got the right equations. Mm -hmm.